The Sussex PR plan this week was supposed to be spotlighting Prince Harry on his charitable solo trips to show his independence and how he's not controlled by Meghan Markle. But all anybody can talk about are those freak off tapes and that bullying report, which Meghan could not stay quiet about. <laughs> Welcome to Popcorn Palace. I am Andy Signor, and everything is just exploding in their faces, just as they were trying to do good, to show up and do good. Well, karma has come to get them. PR experts are out there talking about this, how they are supposed to be pivoting to distract from all this bad press, but they still can't manage to do it. Found this uh, paragraph here, fascinating from the Mercury Time, Mercury News, that said, uh, you know, they're so not so, supposed to dominate the recent coverage with Harry's trip to New York and then London and now Africa, speaking on behalf of the causes he supports in order to prove he can carry himself in the world as a statesmanlike philanthropist, philanthropist, phil, phil, phil I can't say that word, charitable person and thought leader. But a political insider at the United Nations said Harry, when he spoke there, he told Page Six that his goodwill tour had been hijacked by his American wife. Megan had her employees speak on her behalf in a big splashy magazine cover to fight back against a new series of workplace bullying allegations, which first emerged in September 12th. And now that's all the focus is. Uh, it's all been about, you know, this backlash rather than his charitable engagements. Uh, experts are then left to ponder whether his face faces, fa his, his wife faces a reputational reckoning that could leave her permanently branded a terrible boss and not a kind person, similar to her own friend and Montecito resident, Ellen DeGeneres. Huh, could that be true? Could Meghan Markle be poised for an Ellen DeGeneres terrible boss downfall? Well, it's currently happening. But that's not the only thing that's been happening. Megan's now all upset because look who's hot and hanging out with David Beckham. That's right. Prince William's out there with David Beckham and they're promoting their charitable efforts instead of Harry's. And it's got to hurt a little bit because David and Victoria Beckham were friends of Meghan and Harry's. Again, this is why you didn't want to go against the royal family. They're always going to side with the royals, the actual royals. And you've now embarrassed yourself and it's just, it's hard to come back from. Uh, and, and that's the problem. This bullying thing that's now come out that we've talked about in great detail and still being talked about, many are saying could live forever. This could be the label that she cannot shake. And I imagine that's not, gonna be good she's out there preparing for this cooking show where she's gonna be doing gardening and cooking and hanging out with friends but this is gonna be hard to push under the rug now she's claiming the whole hot reporter piece was just you know a lie but from the haters but come on where there's some smoke there's some fire and this isn't the first bullying report you've had from workers and people around you it's hard to imagine it's all fake and again, it's not criminal. It's not like you're doing something illegal, but it just goes and shows what we've always thought, which is that, yeah, you don't look like the best boss, the nicest person. All this act is clearly fake. There just doesn't seem to be a genuine bone in this woman's body. She's just wanting to climb this ladder for so long, bagged herself a prince. The narrative makes sense. I can't deny it. Kevin O'Sullivan had talked to Visa in his show what she has done in her naivete. She thinks she knows all about Hollywood. She doesn't. She doesn't understand it, what she's done. She's propelled the bullying narrative into perpetual motion. She has it back so many times it will now never go away. Every time someone thinks of her, she may deny that. This is fair, but everyone will go, she's a bully. Hard to deny. And now you add to that the whole freak off tapes, which we reported on. And look, to be fair, the majority of you didn't buy it either. But, uh, you know, all this footage of Diddy inviting Prince William and Harry to these parties is not a good look. Now, most experts don't buy it and say, yeah, the Royals dodged a bullet. And I tend to support that as well, as much as, as it was encouraging to see. I know because I know you guys don't like Harry Meghan, but this idea that they were out there was pretty damn far fetched. And I agree. But yeah, Diddy invited them both back when they were brothers. They're young bucks getting themselves in trouble. Obviously, in their youth, the princesses have made the princes have made plenty of headlines with their party animal antics at nightclubs, which they've done. They both made their mistakes as kids. We all do. Uh, but Diddy made a point of inviting them back to their parties. Those invitations were wisely turned down. After William and Kate got engaged, Diddy got the hint and stopped inviting them all together. So good to hear. As well, while there's that fire going out there, at least like that's being tapered down. Now, 
Uh, this is the theory that's out there. And this is an interesting theory, mostly positive from Business Insider, trying to figure out, well, how can they stop this? I mean, honestly, I don't know how, because even their advice that comes in here sort of says they should be doing what they're doing now, which is Harry doing these solo trips, et cetera, uh, to prove it. Now, uh, conflicting workplace reports, as we've heard about, obviously that didn't help. This article does go in and, and reiterates a lot of the positive stories and how Harry and Meghan say the other one was fake. But Evan Nerman, the CEO and founder of the global PR firm Red Banyan, told Business Insider that the recent reports are a sign that the honeymoon period has long since passed for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Well, that's factual. Megan uh, Bollock, the vice president of Jive PR, also noted that because the couple's business ventures haven't been particularly successful and they've crossed paths with so many different people, they've made themselves more vulnerable to mixed opinions on their leadership. They both said it would be best for Harry and Meghan to focus on the philanthropic and service-oriented appearances in the coming months instead of glitzier venues. I mean, facts. That's why they've been in Colombia. That's why they were out there in Nigeria, why Harry's back in uh, Africa and London. He's doing his charitable stuff. And honestly, it is kind of smart for him to be doing it solo. People want to criticize and say, oh, another trip without Meghan. But when Meghan does show up, we criticize them as she's the puppet master. Now, I do think she is. That's my personal belief. And I do potentially think she's letting him do all this and smartly telling him to do all this so it doesn't look like she's pulling any strings. At the same time, I think it's a good look that he's out there doing this by himself. Uh, now, one of those PR reps goes and makes a whole point to lift Megan up, how she has a superpower in public service because of her ability to connect with women and girls around the globe. Sorry, that's funny to me because I know a lot of women and girls around the globe who do not feel lifted up. I did get a chance to kind of meet Megan in, from afar when I was based in Cape Town. I just remember being so impressed with how much she was really inspiring the young females. Well, yeah, she's like a well-to-do, wealthy person coming out to these towns and poising as a royal, you know, I'm probably don't get a lot of other celebrities coming in. So it's easy to look up to the person that's being spotlighted as the Duchess. But what has she really done? Just because she can act in front of a crowd doesn't mean she's actually doing things. But apparently if she can continue to tap into that, whether she's doing public speaking initiatives or different universities around the world, good luck. Focusing on more of the nonprofit, that's where she's able to move the needle and make a lasting impact. Ugh. Now, these solo appearances, this is what I was talking about. Uh, he attended the Well Child Awards, as we know. These solo outings are a boon for the couple because some of the media coverage paints them as Megan as the dominant force. I do think part of the narrative that took hold was this idea that Megan is the one who is in control and that she's the one that drove him towards the break. Harry has said otherwise, but we all still believe that. But by attending these engagements alone, Harry could subtly remind the public he is an adult making his own decisions uh, and ensure he and Megan aren't overexposed as a unit. I just love this of let's remind everybody he's an adult that can make his own decisions. <laughs> the fact that we have to go there, the fact that he didn't have to do that is pretty telling, but I'll admit, yes, it's nice to see him being an adult, allegedly making his own decisions. Do you think he really is? Or do you think Megan's still saying, no, I'm not going, you go do it. Uh, people resonate with some of what he's really passionate about, whether it's a mental health or what have you. People have a soft spot in their hearts for him. I, I do think that's true for some people still. And I was out in London talking to the people. And that's part of my documentary as to why do we hate these two so much? What is it specifically that happened? How do we break it down? Are certain people too hard? Are we not hard enough? All those questions are going to be broken down in this documentary, which I can't wait to get we're getting into the editing now uh more stuff still being shot it's going to be a blast but yeah look the reality is people still do like him maybe not on this channel but they do uh and i think if anybody in that couple is going to get a little bit more uh love at a certain point if they were to break up or apologize it's harry and it's because of his mom i really genuinely think that at the end of the day there's still a lot of people who have empathy for him uh, and, uh, Megan, not so much just cause what has she done aside from suits, which isn't even really hers. Come on. She was a third rate, fourth rate. I didn't ever watched it. She wasn't even in the first couple seasons. She's a supporting, supporting character. That's her claim to fame that in marrying Prince Harry. So, uh, Harry himself though, you know, has a lot of goodwill from people that he's now ruined. Let's be fair. Uh, but I do think there's something he could do to potentially come back. But yes, this is going to be a hard thing for Megan. To, 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 to knock down. Now, do I think it's fair? Yeah, I, I think, there's, think there's some legitimate criticism here and she can deny it all she wants. But uh, 
I don't buy all that she's selling. I just don't personally. What do you guys think? I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think the brand's exploding? Hit that subscribe, hit the bell for alerts. When you get those alerts, make sure you smash the thumbs up and leave your comments down below to help get the word out. We appreciate you guys so much. We got a lot more coverage coming your way and some special stuff in the works. So stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching here on Popcorn Palace, your daily source for royalty.